I'm Mary Ann and I'm at the London MCM Comic Con to talk to James Cosmo of Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Yeah. How did you find that? Well, it was a very uh, enjoyable part to play when I first got the script. Really, really loved the character, you know, as a lot, lots of people do. And uh, yeah, just get into it. It was lovely. Great fun. How, what did you think about your death? your death? I think it came at the right time and it had the right effect. It was a great shame to leave the show because they were great guys, but I think it was uh, time for the character to, to go. Did, did you know ahead of time? Yeah. 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 Did, so you, you didn't wait. So you didn't wait till season three to find out then. Oh no, no, no! I knew from the very beginning how long it was going to last. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Were there um, any other roles that you were interested to play, or did you? Did no, you know no. I, I went in and read for um, Mormont and was offered the part almost right away, and uh, that was the only part I ever wanted to play because I think he's the best character in the whole thing. He's the only one that's got a straight. Uh, he's such a man of uh, integrity that I really loved playing him. It was wonderful. Who's your favourite Game of Thrones character? Uh, Peter Dinklage. I, I love Peter. I love like watching. Tyrion. Yeah, I love watching him. I only had one scene with him which I really enjoyed, but he's a fabulous actor, and uh, he's really broken out of the mould, you know, of people of diminished stature. He suddenly showed that he's a very fine actor as well. I think that's wonderful. Okay. So are you keeping up with all, with all the seasons? Well, due to work, I'm not, but there will be some point where I will sit down for several hours and watch a box set, yeah. Would you ever read the books? Um, I didn't read the books on purpose because I wanted to w just work from the script that I had. Because if you read the books, then you might come with another agenda, you know, and I just wanted to play the character that they wanted me to play. So I haven't read the books yet, but maybe at some point in the future. Yeah. Out of all the roles that you've played, which has been your favourite? Braveheart, um, because being a Scot meant a great deal to me. You know, emotionally and uh, dramatically, it was a great story to be told. So, so speaking of Scotland, this might be a bit political, but what do you think about the issue of Scottish independence? I think it's going to happen. I think it's probably the best thing that could happen for Scotland and the best thing that could happen for England. Um, because I think the, that um, we need um, more small, smaller. I need. I think the country needs breaking up into groups. I think we're run by a, a central government that doesn't really have any connection with people in the north of England or Wales or uh, Scotland. Um, so I think people feeling that they have control over the politicians is a very important thing, and I think Scottish independence is a great step towards that. But I want to see a Scotland where lots of English people come to stay because we love the English. We don't want to be apart from them, but we just like to say uh, how we would like to be ruled. How do you think that film has changed over time? Are there any like very significant things that you've seen in the, the, the process of working, the way your industry's changed? Yeah, I think, I think the advent of CGI was, was extraordinary. Um, but I think it's come to a point now where the gaming industry is bigger than the film industry because in the gaming, gaming side of it, people can actually invest themselves in, in, in the project. Whereas now we're seeing films that are purely CGI and I think people have become jaded. They, they look at it and they say, yes, yeah, so what? We know it was some guy in a, with a computer that did all that. It doesn't mean anything, I don't connect to it. So I think in a way, the big um, franchise movies have had their day, and I think getting back to lower budget dramatic movies uh, is on its way. And with the internet and the availability of digital uh, cameras and how cheap they're getting, it means that lots of young people can make their own movies, put them out there on Vimeo or whatever, and they can be seen. So I think the whole, the whole ball game is changing, which I think is terrific. The studios, where are they going to go? You know, they're way behind the curve as they are, as as people of my generation are way behind the curve on technology and how the world is changing, and it's changing rapidly 
and in the most intriguing way. Have you got any exciting uh, projects coming up that you can tell us about? Yeah, I'm doing a, a project called, I start on Monday, a project called The Pyramid Text, which is a one-man 90-minute film. Okay. It's a 90-minute monologue about boxing, an old boxing trainer. Uh, it's a very emotional, moving piece. I'm approaching it with a great deal of trepidation. Uh, and then I go off and I do a road movie with uh, uh, Katie Tunstall, the folk singer. I'm doing that for a couple of weeks and then I'm uh, going off to do a movie with Ron Perlman in uh, Belgium, in Brussels. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay. How long did it take you to get ready for the role? How long would you be in makeup for? Oh, not long, an hour or so. Only an hour or so? Yeah, okay. Not long. And how did you find was the, the arm wearing all the armour? And everything, you know, the chair well, when, when you were in uh, Iceland, um, you, you needed lots of thermals on underneath, you know, because all the fur and stuff and leather doesn't really keep you warm, you know, so it's quite a, an exercise. How, how, how many hours would you guys shoot? Well, we only had four hours daylight, you know, so you had to rehearse in the dark, <laughs> and then the sun comes up and you do it, you know.